In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another blessed Friday evening. It is 6 p.m. all the way from Sydney, Australia. For those who are with us in this Holy Church and those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 107, verses 23 to 43. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish a city for a dwelling place, and sow fields and plants vineyards, that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them, and they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. The righteous see it and rejoice, and all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things, and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? How are we? How are we? That's the way. Good. I thought it was still school holidays. I, I thought I was going to preach for myself, but it looks like we thank the Lord. The church is full and packed, and uh, we pray... Um, people come in, in the multitudes for the glory of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen to that. You see, sometimes you need to scream because your voices don't appear in the screen uh, or to the people at home. So they think the bishop is preaching with an empty church. So when you raise your voices, that's going to send a brilliant message saying, look, I'm not just by myself here, the church is packed. So say amen. 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 Why don't you do that all the time? <laughs> all right. Any new faces for the first time ever? Show of hands. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yes, 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 at the back. Thank you very much. I pray it's not the last time. Otherwise, I have red belt in karate. I'll be coming after you. I'm dangerous. Just kidding, not. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start this evening with a beautiful um, hymn. We're going to ask our beloved daughter in Christ, Nora, 
to start this evening with this blessed hymn. No. To that, there is only one, and there is no one but him. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name, for he is the true divine God, the creator of everyone and everything that is visible and invisible, the true divine God revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. He, he suffered, he did wonders and miracles, raised the dead, and everything that only God can do, he did while in the flesh to prove that he is the true divine God that came and visited this realm, the tangible realm, this world in the flesh. The miracles he did, only God can do to say that I am that true divine God that has created you and created everything visible and invisible. This God is revealed in the flesh. I am the Son of God who is God revealed in the flesh, the creator of all spiritual, tangible realms. Mary, our Holy Mother, is the mother of the Word incarnate. She is the mother of the Logos who became man. This Logos, as John 1.1 one, one says, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. This Logos is the Son of God, is God Himself. This Logos, who is the second person in the Holy Trinity, the second person in the Holy Trinity, who is God, full God, in nature, in essence, He is full God. This God came into the womb of the Virgin of all virgins forever. Her name is Miriam. Miriam. He was conceived in that womb, took on the human nature and became man. Mary is the mother of the Word incarnate, the Logos who put on the flesh. She is the mother of this person, Christ Jesus, who is God revealed in the flesh. And lately, this old bishop has been kicked, punched from every angle. Yeah? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, there was a letter that has been circulating as well in social media. I won't, I won't talk about it, but I just want to bring it to your... To, I just want to say something. If this letter, I don't know, if this letter is genuine, then I am extremely happy if it's genuine, because if it is genuine, I wish to say this and convey this message to the person who had written this letter, approved this letter, and to the person who signed this letter. I just wish to say to them this, God bless you. I'm very blessed, and I just wish to thank you from the bottom of my heart, and honestly, I mean it, believe you me, the Lord is my witness. I am very happy. If this letter is genuine and you're writing it against me, then I thank you from the bottom of my heart. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you, my dear friend. And I call you a friend. So I thank you for it. If it is genuine, I thank you. All right, let's go to our um, topic. We are going back to the book of Revelation. And uh, another thing, I just want to, I've, I've said this before. Look, I don't have a problem you call Mary the mother of God. Please, can we just move on? Because if Mary is not the mother of God, then who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth? I just want to know. So, stop using, you know, such tactics. You know? And as if like when I refer to the Holy Mother as the mother of Christ, as if Christ's name is not enough far from him. Excuse me, do you know what Christ is? That is God revealed in the flesh. That's what Christ is. 
in, in Aramaic, Hebrew, Syriac language, we call them, there is different dialects. Some call it, you know, pronounce it Mshicha or Mshiho or Mshiha, depending on which dialect you use. So Mshiha, Mshiho, Mshicha, Mshiha is Christ. That's where the word English comes from. Christ means the anointed one. That's what it means. The anointed one. Who is the anointed one? The Logos put on the flesh. When the Logos, who is the Son of God, who is God, when He put on the flesh, He was anointed by His heavenly Father. God the Father anointed Him. And what does anointing mean? He is now stamped, sealed, approved by the Father. So is Christ, the Logos putting on the flesh, God revealed in the flesh, stamped, sealed by the Father. She is the mother of Christ. For Christ's sake, get a life. As if Christ is not good enough. Oh my goodness. Are we out of our minds? Are we? So I thank you all. I love you, man. From the bottom of my heart with a kiss and I blow it all the way to you, my dear friend. Thank you so much for attacking me. But let me say this out of love. You're not attacking me. You're going against the Lord. I'm just worried about you. That's all. Because none of us can go against the Lord. None of us. So out of love and concern, I say, just please be careful. You're not going against me. You're going against the Lord. I can assure you, look, the, believe you me, I'm nothing. That the moment I leave the church, I'm the weakest of all. I'm nothing. So when you see this person talking with yelling, screaming, and all, it's not me. I, when, sometimes, sometimes, when I look at the videos, I say, whoa, who's this guy? That's not me. I'm not this person. It's the Lord using this useless vessel to send his message and to get his voice to every child of his. The moment I leave, I'm, I'm a piece of dust. But when the Lord comes, I'm a roaring lion, a roaring lion. Fear nothing, fear no one, a roaring lion. What are you gonna do, kill me? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Persecute me? Please do. You know, it means nothing. You know why it means nothing? When, because when any one of us, any one of us, when you get to this level where you own nothing, fearing, fear of losing nothing, then you fear nothing and no one. Because I, I, I don't have anything to lose. I don't care about anything. So, mate, you can come and rip me apart. You can ridicule me. You can persecute me. You can do whatever. Please, you know, it's absolutely fine. It's a secondary thing. What matters is exactly like this hymn, which our beloved Nora sang. It is about you, Jesus. That's what it's about. It's not about me, about you. It's about the Lord. So it's all good. It's all good. Believe you me, it's all good. So please, like, stop persecuting me because you're not hurting me. If you want me to be blessed more, continue. But if you want the blessing to go your way, stop persecuting me. Maybe the Lord will bless you. Believe me, I'm saying out of love. <laughs> because it's not worrying me. Like, you can do whatever. It's okay, fine. God bless you. I love you, man. You know, we, we need to take it easy. Why make things complex? Just put on the, put on the, pro, put the prawns on the barbie, mate, and, yeah, and let's get some meat pie, mate, happen in bush taka. And then, oh, I had a Barney with me, boss, the other day, the little guy gave me the bullet. I got no bread, got to put the bite on you, mate. Honestly, we need to get a, we need to take it easy. Like, why complicate things? If you're after my throne, I don't have a throne. I've been kicked out. I'm in the street. You want to come and take the street? Take the street away from me. <laughs> All good. Let's start our book of Revelation. So today it's a new chapter, chapter 18. So it's Revelation 18 verses 1 to 3, and it's going to take us three hours to make a commentary on these three verses. So it's, <laughs> thank God you're still awake. Good. So it's Revelation 18 verses 1 to 3. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, 
having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. All right. Um, it's been a few weeks now since we've uh, made a commentary on the book of Revelation. Just a recap. Chapter 17 and 18 of today's talk, chapter 17 and 18 of Revelation, they talk about uh, Babylon the Great. Um, Babylon the Great, which we said, in a nutshell, we said it is the United Nations, the UN. Because in the olden days, there was Babylon in history, which is in Iraq, Mesopotamia, the country where I was born in. I come from that land. Iraq, Mesopotamia. So that was the ancient Babylon. However, at the end of chapter 17, why do we say this Babylon in Revelation? It is the United Nations of our times. Why? Because in Revelation 17, chapter 17, at the end of the chapter, it says that this Babylon is ruling over all the kings of the earth. This Babylon is ruling over all the kings of the earth. Well, if Babylon that is in Iraq, if that is what is meant in this chapter or in this book of Revelation, well, all of us should know Babylon of Iraq is definitely not ruling over all the kings of the earth. Therefore, in a symbolic language, the book of Revelation is saying, symbolically, the Babylon of the 21st century is the United Nations, which is ruling over all the kings of the earth. So now, this Babylon, it is mentioned in Revelation 17 and 18. Now, in 17, it's talking about who is this Babylon? Who is this Babylon? What is this Babylon? But in chapter 18, today's talk, it is talking about the fall and the judgment of Babylon the Great. It is the fall and the judgment of Babylon the Great, which is the United Nations, who is United States of America behind it. Very sadly. And I just want to say one thing in advance. This is nothing to do about the people that are living in the U.S. But it's to do more so about the system, the governmental system and the system implemented by the United States of America. Because the people of America, there are some wonderful, beautiful Christians to the core whom I love extremely deeply from the bottom of my heart but this is the government of the united states of america that is implementing all these evil laws and agendas which is behind the united nations and we spoke about this in depth in revelation 13 and other parts of revelation united nations was established by two superpowers of the 21st century at the end of World War II in 1945, Great Britain and the United States were the two superpowers of the 21st century. United, uh, the United Kingdoms fell at the end of World War II. But what created the U.S. was the United Kingdoms. These, uh, all, both of them were always together. And they are always together. Out of the entire European nations, the only one that will always remain faithful and loyal to America is Great Britain. Will always. None of the European nations will ever be faithful to America the way Great Britain is. Why? Because they go back a very long way. From the time of the round table, the 16th century, they go back a very long way. 
and, and United Kingdoms created the United States. And then United Kingdom drew back at the end of World War II and they said to America, you go forward and you be the superpower of the 21st century. However, United Kingdoms and Grand America created what was named initially the League of Nations, which was later on changed into the United Nations. Who created the UN? Great Britain and America. But now America is literally running it behind the scenes. And you've got the elites behind all that. Yeah, so there is no United Nations. <laughs> it's just a name. Is it hot? Is it hot a bit? Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. All right, so now, so chapter 18 is talking about the fall of Babylon the Great, which is the UN, which is United States. Let's read verse 1 because you'll be here at least for three hours. <laughs> After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. When we read in chapter 17, verse 1, it says one of the seven angels. We spoke about the seven angels who had the seven bowls, who were the wrath of God, the punishment or the judgment of God upon the entire earth. So chapter 17 talks about one of the seven angels. But in chapter 18, it begins another angel, meaning this angel is not of the seven angels we, sp we spoke of previously. This angel is totally different to all the angels we have mentioned so far. And some commentators they say that this angel is Christ himself because the word angel in Greek, angelos, angelos means messenger. Messenger is someone who has been sent forth by someone else. So in this sense, Christ is the messenger of his heavenly father. God the father sent his son to save, redeem the entire world. In this sense, Christ can be called the messenger of God, i.e. Angelos, angel. And we see this also our father Jacob in the book of Genesis when he was fighting with this angel all night long. That angel, when you read it, you'll see this angel is not any angel. It is actually the Lord Jesus himself. The Lord Jesus himself. So anyway, in 18 verse 1, and after these things, I saw another angel, nothing to do with the other seven angels we talked about in chapter 17 and previously. I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. So this angel is the Lord Jesus, who is the ultimate authority, the sovereign power, the sovereign authority. He had having great authority and the earth was illuminated with his glory. The earth was illuminated with his glory. Before I go any further, what is the issue of the United Nations? What is the problem? I'll come back to it. This angel, he illuminated the whole earth or with his glory. The Lord Jesus, in his first coming, John the Baptist, look what he says to the Jewish people, to the Israelite nation. He says, but there stands one among you. He is referring to the Lord Jesus. But there stands one among you whom you do not know. So in the first coming of the Lord, he was born in the midst of the Israelite nation. But John the Baptist prophesied and said, he is standing in the midst of you. The Messiah is here, but you do not know him. Why 
because if you were after the light of the world you would have known him and you would have seen him but you chose darkness over the light for your deeds were of evil origin of evil origin but there stands one among you whom you do not know John 1 26 and then the Lord himself in John 8 12 he says I am the light of the world and he illuminated in verse 1 of Revelation 18 he illuminated the whole earth in John 8 12 the Lord says I am the light of the world what does the light do illuminates illuminates the whole earth so that angel in Revelation 18 1 is Jesus Christ of Nazareth all glory to his holy name he illuminates because he is the light of the world and the light in its nature illuminates that's all it can do cannot hide things can only reveal and clarify things I am the light of the world John 8 12 the Lord says and then in John 1 5 it says and the darkness did not comprehend it did not comprehend the light the darkness are the people who chose evil deeds over righteous deeds so those people who rejected the Lord Jesus obviously they remained in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend the light ie they did not understand him they did not know him they did not wish to know him why because they didn't want to give up on their evil doings just like now why people reject the Lord because they do not wish to give up on their way of living not ready for the Lord because if I come to the Lord he'll say to me don't go clubbing I'm not ready to give up on clubbing for you Lord if I come to the Lord and he says don't change your face in Istanbul I'm not ready to give up on Istanbul if I come to the Lord and he says to me you need to pray you need to fast you need to come to church you need to read the Holy Bible I'm gonna say when am I gonna enjoy life I'm still young Lord please I'm not a nun I'm not Saint Therese I'm not a monk I'm just an ordinary person can you please give me a, a break when I'm 70 plus and receiving pension from Centrelink hopefully it's still around I'll come to you Lord but now Bondi Beach here we come baby <laughs> Lord who's gonna give me vitamin D and B and C and KFC who's gonna do that I'm not ready Lord that's why it's not the Lord's fault the Lord is the light you know what the earth does the earth rotates revolves around her itself and then when it turns around it says the Sun went down the Sun didn't go down you turned around you gave your back to the Sun that's why you're facing darkness but look how the earth thinks I turned and I gave my back to the Lord and I said the Sun went down Wow aren't we wonderful creatures so we do the wrong things and then we blame God darkness did not comprehend the light all the light can do is shine and show you the way what fault does the light have for you to judge the light yet you are remaining in darkness this is the problem of humanity from day one Darkness did not comprehend him. They didn't want to know him. He's too good. I'm not ready for him. Because I still want to go downtown. Wa'a wa'a dov dov. Wa'a wa'a dov dov. Just like Sharbelli goes, wa'a wa'a dov dov. Yeah? But the second coming of the Lord, which is Revelation, which is the second coming, the second coming of the Lord and the earth was illuminated with his glory so in the first coming he is standing in the midst of you yet you don't know him but in the second coming every knee and every 
tongue will confess Jesus Christ, Lord and God. The whole world will know him, whether they like it or not, because when the sun shines, illuminates the whole earth. So in the second coming, no one is going to say, oh, I don't know who Jesus is. No, everybody will know. Everyone. Those who have rejected him, those who have accepted him, those who have blasphemed against him, every knee will bow in the second coming because he is the owner of everything visible and invisible. He is the creator of every realm, tangible and spiritual. He is God revealed in the flesh who has created all. In the second coming, he'll make sure every knee will bow before him for he is the king of all kings and the lord of all lords my beloved this is jesus christ of nazareth now why why is the lord jesus coming and he illuminates the whole earth because he wants to say to everyone who challenges his authority his sovereign authority he says to them, I will show you who is in charge when I come. Let me see, is it going to be me or you, United Nations? Who is it going to be? You will know then that I'm in charge, not you. Now, Why will the Lord teach this world a lesson that has never ever seen before? Two things the United Nations does which is against the Almighty God, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Two things. One, the UN gives protection and provision. The UN gives protection and provision. And these two things only God does no one else so the UN is challenging the existence of God the sovereignty of God the authority of God because they say we provide protection for humanity and we provide provision for humanity now why was the UN established in the first place because Great Britain and America said there has been wars happening Throughout the world, World War I, World War II, they said after World War II, we need to put an end to these wars. So we need to bring all the nations together and we say, come on people, let's live in harmony, in peace, in unity. No more wars, no more battles, no more killings, no more persecutions. Wow, amazing. Did you know, ever since the UN was established, the wars that have taken place and the millions that have been killed has not happened ever throughout the human race history. Why? Because the UN is the gathering of the people outside the circle of God. We will provide protection. We will provide provision for you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and how did they achieve this under the banner of human rights? In Lebanese, we say Habib Albi. But with it, what would you like? We'll bring you all the beautiful things we make. So, under the banner of human rights, they brought the nations together in the name of human rights. But have you noticed something? No God's rights, only human rights. No more God. So the UN now is your protector. The UN now is your provider. You don't need God, you need us. Just like what they're doing now with this, the voice. The voice. <laughs> I'm saying it in front of the whole world, not just Australia. I'm not voting.
Because what's the point of voting? Because it's all lies. There is no need to vote. So send me the fine. It's okay, I'll pay it. And let me tell you one thing. You are worried now about the Aborigines rights. Excuse me. <laughs> The whole idea is they want to test the waters to see how far they're going to go with humanity, just like they did with the so-called pandemic corona. There was no virus. There was no corona. They are a bunch of liars because their father is Satan, the father of all lies. So this voice thing, you keep it to yourself. Go and apply to the voice and let's see, maybe you're, you're, you sound good and you win the competition. Isn't there something called the voice? And I, and I, I do, I do, and I. Now go and sing. Go and sing to this lost world and lost generation. Enough foolishness, enough. Enough foolishness. <laughs> what voice? This country, they want to make it a republic. They want the UN to come and take control. UN wants to come and take control. So they can dictate to you what you do, what you cannot do. Because the UN pays money to a lot of countries. What do you think they come for free? Of course not. Of course not. During the lockdowns, when people were going out protesting for their human rights. Hello, anybody home? <laughs> Habib Albi, anybody home, they protested for their human God given rights. God given rights. Yes, as human. You, who do you think you are to lock me, to imprison me, to cage me, to say you must do this and you must, you dictate how I should live and now you want to dictate how I should teach my children? Do you see the UN? So there is no voice. It is the voice of Satan. That's what it is, Satan. But they want to put it again under another colorful banner. We need to look after our beloved Aboriginal people. The Aborigines are the natives of this country. Everyone else, get out. Get out. What happened to the lost generation? What have you done, you, you people who came all the inmates from, from, from England, what did you do to the Aborigines? You destroyed generations, killed innocent children. What was his name, that guy who came and landed here in Sydney? Captain Cook? Cook? Freemason. Anybody home? He was a Freemason. I just cannot believe it. I just cannot believe it. The voice. I'm not voting. Send me the fine. And I'll say to everyone, don't vote. Don't vote. And I say to my beloved Aborigines, I love you, man. When you play the didgeridoo, I love you. You keep on playing the didgeridoo and you say, we don't need your votes. We are the indigenous of this nation. The, the land is ours. Automatically, naturally, it's ours. I don't need your voice. You, you keep your voice for yourself. I don't need your voice. I need the Lord, not anyone else. I need the Lord. So now the UN wants to protect and provide. Protect and provide. Look at Psalm number 127 verse 1. I'll read it. Unless the Lord, Jesus Christ, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Who builds? The Lord. Who protects? The Lord. Building means provision and protection, safety. Who does that? God, the Lord, who is God, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now the UN wants to protect me and provide for me. 
the Lord will teach this UN a lesson in the end of times, the 21st century, unfortunately. It's our century. It's not that far. With all love and respect, I need to continue. I need to continue. He will illuminate the whole earth with his glory. Verse 2. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Babylon the great, the United Nations, and behind it, the United States of America. He says it's fallen, it is fallen. He didn't say it will, it will fall in the future. No, it is fallen means it's already fallen. So when I come, the UN will not be there. US will not be there. This is a warning to our beloved people of the United States of America. Don't ever let any fools to come into the White House anymore. If you want to remain as humans with dignity, with respect, you need to come back to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom America has forgotten in recent years. You have introduced laws that are in absolute and complete offense to the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You want to remain the superpower. You want to remain glorious. You want to remain mighty and go against the Lord. You're dreaming. You are dreaming. If America does not come back to you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every law that has been passed against the Lord must be revoked, must be white, must, must be decimated and every law introduced in honor worship and glory of jesus christ of nazareth otherwise the lord will bring america down it is the lord no one else and let me say this whether you agree or disagree with love and respect when america goes christians are the number one will be persecuted by the next superpower which is china And again, I'm not talking about the Chinese people. I'm talking about the dragon, which is that government of China. Some will disagree. Trump is the last president. It's not that, it's not that, it's not about Trump or any other president, it's about the Lord. Please pay attention. No one is perfect, but who appoints presidents? God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He appoints them. It's in the book of Revelation. The one who rules over all the kings, the president, the prime ministers of the world is Jesus. It is the Lord who appoints, not those voting, and now they are tampering with those votes. They can tamper, but it's the Lord who appoints. I've said it and I'll say it again. The reason why the Lord put Biden in there, not the elites, not the Freemason, not the tampering of the votes, it's the Lord who put Biden. You know why? Because the Lord is sending a very profound message to the American people. Just like your president forgets his name, you, my people, have forgotten my name, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have forgotten my name. I've given you a president that forgets his name to tell you, you have forgotten me, I the Lord. I made you superpower, not anyone else. And I will take it away from you the day you challenge my authority, my jurisdiction. Every nation, every individual that challenges the sovereign authority of God must fall and disappear, must. God says, I will give my glory to no one. You touch my glory, I'll wipe you. This is the truth. You know, when you see the Lord Jesus in his glory, you will laugh at these little kids who think they rule the world. You will laugh at them. Not at them, but at the way they behave. Absolute childish behavior. Adults acting like little kids. Very foolish. Who are you trying to challenge here? 
They think they can do things and nobody's watching. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> the voice. <laughs> Believe you me, after Trump, America is finished. It's not about Trump. I don't know the man. And I'm getting no benefits out of this anyway. <laughs> Believe you me, I've never seen him. I've never, I mean, I've seen him on YouTube, whatever, uh, here and there, bits and pieces. But I don't know him. But I'm telling you, Trump is the last one. Because after the Trump, the trumpet will be blown. You know why America is going to fall? Which is the United Nations, yeah? Two reasons. Because America is challenging God at the moment. It's challenging the Lord. It's going to fall for two reasons. One, internally. The other reason is externally. The internal reason, there will be traitors within America. There are traitors within the White House. There are traitors within the Pentagon. There are traitors within the governmental system. Traitors who have sold America. And the reason why these traitors came up on surface, because America walked away from the Lord. The Lord allowed them to be punished. To teach them that I'm in charge, not you. You think you can rule the world? It is the Lord who rules the world, not you. So when you challenge me, I will allow infiltrators from within your circle to come and do wondrous things, destroy America. A lot of traitors are within America. And the external reason, it is the wrath of God. Jesus Christ will come very heavily on America. The wrath of God. But internally, there is a lot of traitors. They literally sold it. You'll remember this. The day America goes, remember what's going to happen to the Christians. Very harsh. Very harsh. But the problem with America, it will take the rest of the world with it when it goes down. And we read in verse 2, look at this. And he cried, the Lord, mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And when the Lord says it twice, he means that it is fallen. There is no two ways about it. There is no escape. It will fall because America doesn't want to repent. There are good Christians in America still. But it's diminishing. They took, they took the Holy Bibles out of schools. LGBTQ, RSTU, VYZ, they introduced everywhere. This is the UN. The UN introduced all these laws. You know, it's human rights, remember? Human rights meaning the human can do whatever, however, whenever, with whoever. So if this human comes and one day he says, I want to marry a dog, United Nations says there is a law that protects your rights. You can marry a dog. And when, when they introduce this law and force the churches to marry same sex, then there is a law that protects those people and force the church to marry them. And if you don't, the church will be closed, fined, and you'll be persecuted and prosecuted and thrown in prison. Because the law of the land says you have to marry these people. The church needs to abide by the laws. A day will come, they will force the churches like they did in some states in America. And when they bring it into the kindergartens and primary schools and then come and say to this little innocent angel, do you feel you're a boy? Who in their sick mind think this child knows what they're doing? So you are going to dictate and say to the parents, you have no right to teach your child. It is the UN that will teach your child. 
because we pay money to Australia and other countries. Money. Mm. Do you know when any country welcomes uh, refugees, do you know where they get the money for those refugees? The UN pays for it, not Centrelink. What do you think, Australia is a nice country, they just bring people in? No, they get, they get rewarded for it. You bring this many people into your country, we'll give you this many millions. So when they give those millions, do you, think, do you think they're going to give it for free? No. In return, the country is ours. So we do whatever we want to do next time. So when we bring in laws, you implement them, Mr. Prime Minister, because you're just a puppet doing what we dictate to you. That's what it is now. Governments are puppets. Nothing more, nothing less. It's surfaced up now. Everything is in the open and the clear. So now they're going to teach your child. Parents, whether you like it or not, tough luck. I would choose to die with dignity, not with disgrace. Um, sorry, just for a moment, I've been brought to my attention. There is a Subaru, I don't know if it's ELF 27Y, it's blocking another car. There is a Subaru. ELF 27Y is blocking another car. If you're driving a Subaru, if this is not the number plate, I don't know. But please, if you can, um, just um, adhere to it. Thank you. All right, so now, he's saying Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place. Look at this. It has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. It's a place for demons. My goodness, what are the demons? Where do demons live? In Sheol, Hades, in hell. That's where they belong. So that United Nation that spoke about human rights became a place of demons dwelling. Why? Because they did everything against the Almighty God. Demons have infiltrated that place. So it's hell now. And what else it is? A prison for every foul spirit. So this person wants to marry a tree. The UN says, go for it. Isn't that a foul spirit? Someone wants to be neither a male nor a female in between. Isn't that a foul spirit? One day I saw this creature on TV. I didn't even know if it was a male, nothing. A place for foul spirits, a prison. It's embracing them. Like when you put people in prison, you're bringing them together and you're caging on them. So the UN with all these evil laws have turned humanity into foul spirits. Humans became those foul spirits because their actions, their lifestyles became evil, evil, evil. If you think about it, a lot of things came out of America and taught the rest of the world. Technology, internet, YouTube, Instagram. TikTok is Chinese. But, but you see, the Chinese have learned. They learned from the masters. The Americans. Yeah? Do you know what TikTok is? Do you know why they called it TikTok? It's uh, who said time? Well done. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tuk, tick. <laughs> Boom. You know it's a it's a bomb ticking. Tick tock tick. You know what the Chinese have done? They learned from the masters, from the Americans. Chinese, with all love and respect, they cannot create things. They can only take something and enhance it, modify it. But to create it, the Americans do. So what they did, they took that technology, the idea, and they called it TikTok. TikTok is time. 
So what are they saying? You go to China and access their TikTok in China. In China, TikTok, you have absolutely no jurisdiction to put anything that is weird. And the Chinese TikTok is very clean. Everything is educational. Everything is family orientated. Everything is to build a human being. But what did they do for the rest of the world? They infiltrated with, oh my, my colorful things. What? The, the six color rainbow. What six color? This is a, a 600 million color. They infiltrate, they pushed in it everything evil. To say what to the rest of the world, the non-Chinese, to say it's a TikTok. With time, we will brainwash you all. And when the time comes, you will have nothing. This is gone. So one press, you see a holy thing. Another press, unholy. Colorful. Black and white. Yeah. But in China, it's very clean, very controlled by the government. Yes. Yes. Chinese, very smart. Oh, TikTok, it's time. And we'll press the button when the time comes. Your brain is washed now. What God? What God? Hollywood, America. <laughs> Habib Albi. Do you know, do you know what Hollywood has done for millions upon millions upon millions of young men and women? Destroyed generations, destroyed societies, destroyed human values, morals, ethics, principles that make up a human destroyed them all in the name of entertainment absolute evil controlled by the who illuminatis and when this angel came he illuminated the whole earth illuminatis they named themselves illuminatis the enlightened ones who is their master satan satan illuminatis are satan worshipers they control hollywood and what does Satan do? He uses entertainment to infiltrate the human from the back door of, Im of the imagination. My goodness, I, we spoke about this in Revelation 13. I'll touch base on it, please. I beg you, listen, listen, if you've missed it. Imagination. It is one of the most precious gifts given by God to every human, every human. It's one of the most precious gifts ever given to humanity. It's called imagination. God himself imagines before he creates. With your imagination, you could go anywhere and do wonders with your imagination. It's a God-given gift. But what happens when that imagination becomes unclean? You could imagine every evil thing you will ever imagine. It turns from holiness to filthiness. Did you know one of the most powerful things that could infiltrate your imagination is entertainment? <laughs> Satan is smart. He has knowledge of thousands upon thousands of years. We are nothing compared to his knowledge and wisdom. We're nothing. Someone will say, I'm, I'm 21. I know what I'm doing. You're 21. You're fighting against someone who has knowledge of thousands of years. Who overcame your father, Adam. Do you think he can't come, he can overcome you? Who do you think you are? He overcame your Adam, your father, Adam. So entertainment is one of the most powerful things can be used to infiltrate your imagination. It comes from the back way of your imagination. And then guess what? When the imagination is manipulated, guess what? 
your subconscious mind is manipulated. The subconscious mind, let me tell you, it is the sleepy mind. What is functional in you on a day by day basis is the rational mind. The rational mind, normally it's around 10% of your, of your whole mind. You know the geniuses, they call geniuses, Beethoven and people like that. When they go to 11, 12, they become geniuses. Two more, two more knots, you become a genius. They become un, not, not normal people, like the, the two, two genius to be humans. Only 12% of their, of their intellect they use. 90% is the subconscious, the sleepy one. When the subconscious is shaped by entertainment, I wanna dance with somebody, yeah, yeah. I wanna feel the heat with somebody, yeah, yeah. If you notice, if you notice, Hollywood has become evil, evil, evil as the time goes by. All these so-called celebrities, you know, when they come on the stage, especially the females, huh? Khabib mm. Albi. When these, when these Hollywood celebrities, they come on the stage, I, I beg you, if you pay attention to the drum beat, if you pay attention to the body moves, it is satanic rituals. It is a hypnotic way to brainwash you and infiltrate your imagination and scar it forever and then control the subconscious mind. By the way, the subconscious mind is the one that God uses to come to your rational. When the subconscious is controlled by evil, of course, God will not exist in your life anymore. Entertainment Hollywood destroyed millions of generations where they made them godless because of so-called music dancing and this girl comes and dances and everybody what is this do you see them how they jump controlled they are controlled they're controlled they are carefully please it's not a joke those drum beats those this is carefully orchestrated carefully put together in this way to infiltrate your intellect your subconscious and your imagination wash you clean right out away from god away from god i beg you i beg you i beg you hollywood needs to be burned from the ground from its roots by the way i'm not yelling the Lord is screaming. He cried mightily. Yeah? He cried mightily. Revelation 18:2. He cried mightily. Wake up, people. Wake up, people. I am on my way back. I'm coming back. When I come back, I will clean. I will cleanse this whole world with fire. No more water. I did it at the time of your father Noah and I made a promise my rainbow is seven colors look at Satan he uses six because Satan loves the number six 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 the mark of the beast anyone home Satan loves six you know why he loves six because number six is incomplete seven is complete God uses seven seven days of the week Book of Revelation, seven, seven trumpets, seven balls, seven, 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 seven angels, because it's a complete number. Satan loves incomplete because he doesn't want you to be complete. He wants you to be incomplete to bring you hell, to bring you to hell. He promised our father Noah, no more rain, no more flood, and here is the arch of that beautiful covenant, the rainbow, the rainbow that appeared in the sky, seven colors. Look what they use now, six. And there are so-called churches that are proud to put that color on their, 
these are not the house of the Lord it is the house of Satan they don't ever call them churches don't ever call them churches these are the sons of the snake even if they are cardinals popes bishops I don't give one penny they are the sons of the snake He made a promise no more rain but the, but God did not promise no more fire <laughs> so in the beginning he wiped the world with water in the end he will wipe the world with fire with fire that's why World War three will start very soon nuclear warheads and look at us what are we fighting over still my name, my position, my, my house, whatever. We're fighting over materialistic things. Materialistic things. We're fighting over materialistic things. And the Lord is coming back to wipe the world with fire. When are we going to wake up? Don't listen to these Hollywood people. I'm not judging them, I'm praying for them, but don't, if they remain in this evil way, don't go there. Do, what's this, do? Michael Jackson, where is Michael Jackson? They destroyed him, mentally, physically. Where was that young boy, Michael Jackson, the innocent young boy who was a member in the church choir? What happened to Michael Jackson, poor innocent boy? Do you see what Satan does? Do you see? Is this what Hollywood is? You became famous, rich. What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and at the end loses himself? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord endures forever. His word endures forever. It is the Lord. It is the Lord, my beloved. Babylon the Great became a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. This is all symbolic. Every hated bird, this is every foul spirit, every law that is being introduced against Jesus Christ is a foul spirit and a hated bird. They think it's easy to remove the Bibles from the church, from their schools. They think it is easy to introduce laws against the almighty true divine God. You will answer for it. You will answer for it. God is the fair judge and he judges fairly and squarely. No one gets away with it. No one, no one, my beloved. Anyway, I don't want to keep you here for too long. Verse three. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. A fornication. Fornication, you know what? That adultery, in other words. Adultery. What is adultery? I'm attached to this body. And while I'm attached to this body, I go and attach myself to another body, a foreign one. That is adultery. As Christians, who are we attached to? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Aren't we? We are the members in the mystical body of Christ he, and Christ is the head of this body. So we are attached to the Lord Jesus. While we are attached to the Lord, we go and attach ourselves to a foreign body. This is adultery. So when a nation that was one day Christian and now is an atheist, that is an adulterous nation. That nation was attached to the Lord. Now it is attached to Satan. That is adultery. It says here, all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, of her adultery. All the nations. <laughs> Even my grandma in a little village somewhere in the Middle East, she's got TikTok. <laughs> they all drank of the wine of her, of her fornication, of the wrath of her fornication. 
Everybody's got now internet and Wi-Fi. Even in the villages, go and milk the cow. What do you want the iPhone and the Galaxy for? Everywhere. I remember till now, I was, I was going um, somewhere uh, through, uh, by plane, and I'm sitting at the gate awaiting the, um, to board on, you know, to board the plane. So just a thought came. I said, I'm going to turn around. I just want to see how many people are talking to each other face to face. None. With all the people that were in that airport, believe me, literally, literally, every single one had their head down. While walking as well, not just sitting. Habibi, do look. What's this? Sometimes when I walk in the airport, I'm trying to avoid them. They keep on coming my way because they're not looking. They're looking into the screen. Everyone, all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Yes, Mammon, the false god. People denied God for money and wealth, fame. The dollar sign became the false God, even in the church. Money became God. We sold Christ like Judas Iscariot did for money. Today, even in the church, we are buying and selling in the name of the Lord trading in the house of the Lord because I want to be rich because money brings me power and power brings me people I'll make them bow before me wow where is the power of the Holy Spirit you know I'll leave you with this the day of St. Peter's Basilica was being opened the Vatican and please don't get me wrong I'm not talking about uh, the Catholic Church okay I'm not so please today like I'm really scared what to say because everything I say they are holding against me so relax please have a fish burger oh no not fish burger don't worry about it the day that Saint Peter's Basilica was being opened this is true story this is history Of course, the Pope is there, there's cardinals, bishops, pre from all over the world have come. Wow. Magnificent structure. So anyway, while they're all there, and, and then one of, one of the bishops or the archbishop stood up and said, Pope, he said, yes. He said, today I can stand with my head up high and proudly say, the day that I say I have no gold or silver, is gone look at the structure it is all built with gold and silver and precious stones that day where i say i have no gold or silver to give you that day is long gone pope being proud about it you know what he was saying here he is talking against simon peter when he said to that paralytic man at the beautiful gate the temple of Jerusalem when Simon saw him paralyzed unable to move unable to work he came back and said to him gold and silver I have not but one thing I have and I'm giving it to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth get up and walk so this lost soul cardinal said the day is gone Pope to say I have no gold and silver but the Lord has witnesses all the time, every time. Another cardinal stood up from the other side and he said, Pope, will you allow me to rip answer my brother? He said, please do. He said, my dear friend and brother, it is so sadly also I can say the day 
is gone when I can say in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. That day is long gone too, my dear friend. Because the day you worship money, the day Christ has walked away from the church. It became a den of thieves and a trading place, a supermarket. Where is the day we say in Jesus mighty name, get up and walk. That day is gone because we're not worshiping the Lord. We're worshiping material, 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 my beloveds. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. My goodness. The trades they make with America, with the United Nations, America. Oh. Sound of Freedom, that movie. 850,000 innocent children disappear from America every single year for some sick in the head people. And then they want to tell me the government is not aware of this. 40,000 children disappear from Australia and the government hides it because they are corporates with it. They have committed adultery. Fornication. And then church leaders come out proudly and say, listen to the government, the government is from God. No, it's from Satan. This kind of government is from Satan. Don't you ever offend God. When God puts a government, he will put a government that will protect the freedom and the dignity of humanity, not enslave humanity who enslaves people satan corona in 2020 was an enslavement of humanity but you see the lord allows it, even though it's not his will but he allows it because he's saying to all of us my children have walked away from me if you walk away satan will control you you need to come back you need to come back. Why are you going to the wrong places for the wrong reasons? Come back to me, my child, and I will set you free. I will set you free. I will set you free. I pray the next United States of America's president, which is 24, the elections, I know some people are not going to like this, but I pray it's going to be Donald Trump. But one thing I'll say, out of the entire presidents in the history of America, no one promised one thing and he did, except Donald Trump. I don't care. Everyone, no one is perfect, by the way. So if you're going to judge this person, well, judge yourself. Because everyone is a sinner. The only one who's perfect in the flesh is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Period. He is the only perfect Lamb of God. But you tell me, which president? Yet he was being persecuted throughout his, his term. No one ever was persecuted the way this man was. Throughout those four years, maybe not even four years, they gave him hell. Yet, when he said, I'll build, a, I'll build the wall and I'll make Mexico pay for it, he did. When he said, I will, I will bring America back to, it, to, to its you know, uh, glory, he did. He brought a lot of businesses back. It flourished. Everything flourished within a very short time. But I want to see this man one-on-one -on -one behind closed doors with no detectives. <laughs> I want to talk to him. I want to see him five minutes. Say one thing to him and then leave him. 
But believe you me, if Trump is not the next president, it's not about Trump again, it's the Lord. If Trump is not the president of America next year, kiss America goodbye, Christians will be trampled underfoot. Because the next superpower will persecute the Christians. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's not about Trump, it's about the Lord. He becomes the president of America, I'll be the prime minister of Australia. Um, when I become the prime minister of Australia, to all my beloved men with tattoos and big muscles, get ready because one of you will be the minister of transport. <laughs> The other one will be the Minister of Interior and the other one Exterior. I'll make you all, all the boys because they are men. You know? Yeah. They are real men. You know what I can't stand? Someone is a man but is a wussy. Yeah, yeah, I'm really upset. You know, those who deal with drugs and you see them in the street, punching on and kicking, doing, they're real men. When they say, I hate you, they say it in your face, behind your back. They are not one thing in your face, another differently in behind your back. The politicians are not men because they say one thing in front of your face, totally different behind your back. So I want to bring once for a change, real men who say we love you in your face and hate you in your face and behind your back. Now these men should run the country. So big boys, get ready. <laughs> and if I be the prime minister, I'll sack every politician. I, I won't say, oh, well, let's vote. What vote? Get out of my sight. I'll bring the people, I'll select them. I'll bring the Christian ethics and laws and morals back to the country. And I will get rid of all the evil laws that they have introduced in 24 hours. And then I'll cut off the grants from those so-called Christians who were very weak during lockdowns. No more grants for you. Get out. I want real Christian leaders, real men. I'll give the grants to real men, not cowards. And then they can kill me. I've done my part. But I'll appoint someone else that will come in my place. And you'll have your freedom then. And we will protect all the, all the minorities' freedoms as well, but within guidelines. This is a Christian country. And the Lord taught me to love my neighbor. My neighbor can be an atheist, can be a Muslim, can be a Buddhist, can be anyone. I'll give them my life. But morals, ethics, values, and we will bring back family values. It will be taught on every national television, on every network, in every school, in every educational department. We will bring family values because this is the Western world that destroyed family value. It'll have to be brought back. Without family value, there is no God. Because God is family. You remove family, you're removing God from your life. All you're going to ask for is absolute hell. Demons dwelled in that place where they spoke in the name of human rights. Demons are dwelling there. We need the Lord. We need God in our life. We need Him. We pray, my beloveds. We pray the Lord comes back and fixes everything. We pray the Lord changes everything. We are too tired. We are heavy burdened. Lord, have mercy on your church. Have mercy on this world. One more time, Lord, we beg you, change this evilness, decimate it, plug it from its roots, bring back your holiness, bring back your light, bring back your righteousness, bring back your glory, bring back the day of dignity, and bring back the true humanity, Lord. Bring back the true identity of what a human is supposed to be. Enough of this evil. Enough of this filth. Enough. Lord, we beg you. Enough.
Time is up. Nora, are you ready? Please, let's hear your beautiful voice. Um, just a couple of um, <clears throat> reminders, and then we'll, um, we'll uh, say the uh, sealing prayer. Um, again, about the sponsorship um, uh, of a child or a family overseas, we've mentioned this um, last week. Those who have brought back the forms today, if you would like to also, you haven't heard about it, you'd like to sponsor a child or a family, We've just recently been to three countries, Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria, and we visited um, a lot of families in these three countries, um, the situations, well, a lot of families there. It's an absolute um, terrifying situation. It's terrible. It's very hard, below poverty, struggles beyond imaginations. Um, so that's why we decided to open the door for an ongoing sponsorship from our beloveds within Australia and also abroad, wherever you are, whoever you are. May the Lord Jesus bless you abundantly, my beloveds. But I can assure you that dollar that you send can really make a huge difference in someone else's life somewhere in this globe. Uh, we mentioned an example was just um, this mother works all month long and she goes to work every day on foot, two hours each way on foot, to get $4 after one month of hard work. $4 only. So you could imagine how difficult, difficult, difficult it is to survive just on a day-by-day -day basis. That's why we opened this door to sponsor a child on an ongoing monthly basis. We're asking... If you wish to donate a one-off donation, that's fine. Anything and everything counts. However, we're seeking more so a monthly donation, an ongoing, so we can continue. We don't want to sponsor them and then stop after six months or after a year. We wish to continue as many uh, years as possible or as long as possible. So these monthly donations is greatly, greatly appreciated. And it can be any amount. Okay, it can be any amount, whatever you can afford. And if you can't give any financial support, at least pray, my beloveds. Because prayer is the foundation to every success and every prosperity. So pray for this intention. But if you can, who, whoever you are and wherever you are, um, please, there is the details on the screen. Um, just uh, follow those informations. It's the Good Samaritan Aid Society um, charity. You can go to the website and then follow through, um, through it, and then you can do your donations. Um, just one thing I'll just bring to your attention. If you are going to have a bit of a difficulty, we've been having some technical issues. I don't know why. It uh, looks like the enemy always tries, you know, tries his best. But uh, please do go to the website and you can select to donate. Um, if you are unable for whatever reason it is, um, we are sort of adhering to it and we're going to fix it ASAP. But that is the website to do it on a monthly basis, on a regular basis. Those who have taken forms with them last week and they brought them, please see your brother in Christ, Francois. He is sitting in the foyer area. His name is Francois at the table there on the side. Please do see him, give that form back. If you wish to enroll, Fill out the form today or take another form with you to your loved ones. Speak to your family members, to your friends, to your cousins. We need your help. Literally, we need your help because we wish to help these people who are in absolute desperate need. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw it with my own eyes. The situation is, is absolutely gruesome. And it's not only these three countries that we want to. We want to help, and we are helping already with the help of so many generous donors, my beloved, but, or sponsors. Uh, but we need to increase on that. We need to expand on that. We need to help more children, more families. We want to build things for them in the, in the near future, God willing. Okay, anything and everything is possible with the Lord. But as, again, we need to put our hands together because this is the true family of Christ. 
where we not only think of our own selves, but our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters who are living um, on the face of this globe. So please see Francois to sign in, to take some forms with you, get other people on board. If you've got the form with you, give it back to Francois today. And we are greatly, greatly, greatly appreciative of all the support you are showing, my beloved. Um, the Divine Heart Sunday School is coming back this Sunday, the 8th of October. All the parents who have their children enrolled in our Divine Heart Sunday School, it is coming back this Sunday, the 8th of October. Our um, youth group committee have organized a walkathon for this year. It's taking place on Saturday on the 21st of this month. Saturday, the 21st of October this month. Please, today is the last day for enrollment. If you haven't enrolled, please put your name down for the walkathon. Come and let's walk a few kilometers in the love of Christ. Lose a couple of kilos. And then be, being myself, your, your, um, your chef for the day, I'll make sure that you gain 20 kilos on the two kilos that you lost. Um, so it's on Saturday, 21st of October. Please enroll, enroll, enroll. Today is the cutoff date, the last day. Um, that's it. <laughs> you love me? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. The voice? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's stand for the finale prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Go in peace, my beloved. The Lord Jesus be with you always. God bless you.